I get so excited when I get a delivery from Bayi.jp. That box that traveled all the way here from Japan. It's got that beige tape on it. Opening these up is like Christmas every time. Except I'm actually getting stuff I want. Sometimes I don't even remember everything that's in here. Like, look at this adorable little Matsui Godzilla. That's cool. Oh, Godzilla magazine. This is gonna have some great pictures to share with you guys. All right, let's open one more thing live on camera. Oh, this is the Godzilla and Magic Cube. I've been looking for this for a long time. Yeah, this is based on the 1990s Godzilla and art. And you're about to watch a video all about how this whole thing started. But don't forget to sign up for Bayi.jp and take advantage of the discount that MIB viewers get. What will your treasure be? I'm gonna go through the rest of this box. You go hurry and sign up today. 1984 was a tremendous year in Godzilla history. After a nine year break, Godzilla was returning to the big screens in... It, Godzilla. This was also the first Godzilla movie to hit the reset button on most of the continuity. Every previous Godzilla movie was wiped away from the story except the first movie from 1954. After decades of knowing a more family-friendly, good guy Godzilla, Japan was going back to the Big G's darker roots. Godzilla himself was the primary threat again. Godzilla was bad again. But that didn't mean there'd be no Godzilla for the kiddies to enjoy. Because 1984 was also the launch of Godzilland, a multimedia campaign that featured adorable versions of Godzilla and his fellow monsters. Godzilland can also be referred to as Goji Rando, and from time to time, you'll hear someone calling it Godzilla Land. The Godzilla Land art style is very distinct, and it's been used quite often through the Heisei era of Godzilla films up until around 1996-97. The Godzilla Land campaign itself can be broken down into two distinct eras. The 1980s, and then a soft reboot in the 1990s. Each era has their own different idea of what exactly Godzilla Land is. In today's video, I'm going to focus on the 1980s Godzilla Land. We'll look at the characters, various types of merch, and some real big surprises too. So buckle up, because things are about to get cute. Playtime! Yay! A great majority of Godzilla Land merch comes in the form of small gifts you'd buy at a candy store. Cards, stickers, pins, things like that. That's right. At one point, Godzilla was in the same playground as Sanrio with their popular Hello Kitty line. Virtually all of these small goodies came from the Yamakatsu company for toys, fancy goods, and models, who also made similar items for other major licenses. You'd see boxes like these, each with the official Godzilla and logo. This logo was often joined by Comic Source Story and There is the Monster's Paradise, both in English. Inside the boxes were usually paper sleeves, often sealed with a tiny staple. And inside those sleeves, you'll find your stickers of various shapes and sizes, buttons, magnets, all sorts of small goodies. In general, Godzilla and art was vibrant. It was popping, refusing to commit to a particular color scheme or scale. Characters can reappear in any number of color combinations. Oftentimes, the whole world of Godzilla Land was abstract, with no boundaries or inner logic. Characters can appear next to themselves, maybe multiple times. Their sizes change. Backgrounds come and go. Sometimes it evokes a very Andy Warhol style of pop art. I absolutely love it, both as Godzilla history, but even as just someone appreciating art. Imagine a room with giant framed versions of these pictures. That would look so cool. But that's not to say Godzilla and also couldn't be more grounded. There are abundant pictures or stories that bring the characters back down to Earth. In things like sticker books and coloring books, you'll find stories where the monsters live on this island. And things look how you'd expect. But on the other hand, a lot of the art will add human elements scaled up for the kaiju. Here's Godzilla driving a car. Here he is playing baseball. Here's soccer. Godzilla likes to go to space a lot. Honestly, he seems like he's up for anything. Is there a logic here? Are the monsters all giants, or are they the size of human children? Every so often I find art with the characters next to buildings indicating they're still giant size. 
But the real answer is probably, it doesn't matter, it's whatever it needs to be. The monsters are happy enough spending their time playing, roughhousing, hosting the Olympics, going to space, and so on. And eating rice balls. They love rice balls. Rice balls and drumsticks. Don't choke there, Baragon. The 1980s cast of Godzilla and characters had some interesting choices. Let's start at the beginning, though, with the big guy, Godzilla himself. His main color seems to be green. This Godzilla has fangs, with overbite when his mouth is closed. Six fingers, six toes, and one row of dorsal plates. Most people might recognize this Godzilla from his famous pose, but in the 1980s, they weren't ashamed to show him from any angle. There's Manila, whose main color is pink, and he's pretty cute with his little butt face. A little butt on his face. Ingiris is often on all fours, occasionally showing some dog-like qualities, like barking or slobbering. Sometimes he's cleaned up and even humanized, but usually he looks disheveled, with a really long curled snoot. Maybe it's because Godzilla likes to bite his tail so much. You get three Mothra for the price of one in Godzilla Land. There's the full-grown Mothra, who acts not just as a mother to her young, but to all the monsters, often depicted as taking care of them and providing first aid. Even all the monsters can be a real dick to her sometimes. Seriously. If you look at the Mothra larva dead on, it looks like this. Kind of like a Super Mario Bros. Goomba. However, if you change your angle, you'll see that they also have a long shrimp-like body and tail. There seem to be two young Mothras, with some art probably meant to mean one girl and one boy. Rodan is red and he's got a pointed beak. He's got two zigzag lines on his belly. Baragon is usually a tan color with his trademarked ears and nose horn. Ibra is here as just a big red lobster. A lot of art of Godzilla sending Ibra flying. Hedora is one of my favorites. In my head, it's a she. The eyes are rounded to look much friendlier, and I've said this before, but she's got an overall gossamer shape from Looney Tunes. And I should point out that in most art, you'll find all of the monsters getting along fine, even the traditionally bad monsters. Even in the stories where King Ghidorah and Mechagodzilla are acting as antagonists, you might find Hedora will be on the side of the good monsters, which is interesting. Speaking of King Ghidorah, a big giveaway that you're looking at Godzilla and King Ghidorah are the fluffy sides of his face. This, and the fact that his main color is yellow, bring a real Big Bird vibe to this design. Mechagodzilla is based on the Showa incarnation because that's the only version that existed in 1984. His main color scheme is his traditional all gray, but it's also common to see some blues mixed in there. Gigan's in the cast too, and like Mechagodzilla, his design is more detailed than the other characters, with more colors. Mogira is an interesting choice. Remember, this is 1984. Mogira and Godzilla are both Toho properties, but they haven't shared any screen time yet. And an even better question is, why Mogira and not Jet Jaguar? There's no Godzilla and Jet Jaguar, and that's ridiculous! But Mogira gets to hang around. His main colors are blue and purple, and he's usually depicted digging or burrowing and popping out of holes like Bugs Bunny. There might be more characters in Godzilla Land? It's hard to say. For example, is this art depicting an adult Rodan and their child? Or is it the same Rodan cloned and rescaled like a lot of Godzilla Land art tends to do? Is this a separate new character holding hands with Manila? Or is this a clone of Manila playing dress up? And there's a third one in the back! And what about this here? Is this a new, separate Godzilla character with a bow on her head? Actually, there's a stronger case for this character, as I have her on some other art as well. Here she's on some header cards. Not to get ahead, but the 1990s Godzilla Land will introduce a pink female Godzilla named Godzilla. So is this sort of a proto-zilly? There's also a UFO that loves to hang around. I'm under the impression it's those pesky exilians. Otherwise, that's your cast of the 1980s Godzilla Land run. Outside of the candy store goodies, there were Godzilla Land toys. This walking toy here was made by Bandai and has the full logo and everything. He looks a little like the Godzilla Land art. I have him in green, and I also have this pink one. It makes me wonder if there's also a brown one out there, like on the top of the card here. These molds look incredibly similar to another toy that came out in 1984 by Bandai. 
this flocked Godzilla toy that's not considered part of Godzilla. -land. Look at this guy, this is another 1984 Godzilla, and he might be part of Godzilla. -land. Certainly looks like some of the art. Hey, Don, I was wondering, do you want to be my girlfriend? Okay, I'll call you later. Then you have these small toys who look a lot closer to the Godzilla and designs. They came with and without suction cups. Look at this Mecha Godzilla. It looks almost exactly like the Godzilla and art. There are more of these characters out there, and I've been trying to hunt them down forever. But you can see in this book, there's also a Rodan, Mothra, King Ghidorah. Hell, there's even one of these little Godzilla toys included in this toy, which seems to be some kind of zipline. These figures also come in a slightly larger size. They might look like soft vinyl, but they're more rubbery, like a squeaky toy. Going back to the topic of flocked toys, I have this pink Mothra and a green and pink King Ghidorah, which are labeled as Godzilla. -and. I know there's also a green Mothra, but I've never seen any other characters from this line besides these two. Not as of yet, anyway. But if you want something that looks almost exactly like the print Godzilla and art, then behold the erasers. Oh, these molds look incredibly like their flat counterparts. Some of them are even in the same poses. Each character comes in different color options, just like the 2D art. These are some of my favorite Godzilla and items. Still, I'd love a new 4-inch soft vinyl series one day. Maybe one day. One of my other favorite items is this 1984 board game by Bondi. Godzilla's Monster Island's Great Uproar Game. Just look at all the art on this board. If you're going by this, then apparently all of the monsters live in houses shaped like themselves. And look at the art on the back of the board game. Does this confirm that all Godzilla and his people in suits? All right, we're gonna need to take a quick break to process all this. But here's a quick trivia question. Godzilla and would get its own dedicated video game on the MSX in 1985. What's the full name of that game? Is it A, Adventure Godzilla and B, Go Godzilla and gojira -kun. C, Big Monster Parade, or D, gojira -kun. The answer after this. Welcome back to Playtime Trivia. We're about to talk about a Godzilla and 1985 MSX video game. What was it called? The answer, D, gojira -kun. just gojira -kun. But make no mistake, this is an official Godzilla and item. How awesome is that? This is a puzzle game that's been adapted into two more versions since. The sprites are pretty decent, and what's cool is that this is one of the earliest Godzilla video games ever made. The next year, another MSX game, Monsters Fair, would also use Godzilla and art in its instruction book. But I don't consider this itself a Godzilla and branded game. And that was not uncommon in the 80s and 90s, for Godzilla and art to appear on things that might not necessarily be Godzilla and merchandise. Packaging, tags... This little Godzilla guy got around. One thing you're gonna see in the 90s is a rebranding of this artwork is just Godzilla. Like these band-aids here from 1993. It's got the 1980s Godzilla and art all over it, but... It's just going by Godzilla. I'm still finding out about 1980s Godzilla and merch. Every so often I find something that I never knew existed, and then it never appears anywhere else again. Sometimes I miss a chance to get something crazy, like this sewing kit where you can make your own plush Godzillas. Look at this, this is not in my hand right now and that is a crime. Who do I call? I've got an addiction and I'm not ashamed. Godzilla must have enjoyed some level of success because it was knocked off by a bootleg series. Here's a series of cards where they took Godzilla and gave him a horn. Yeah, basically every monster looks exactly the same except for maybe one jarring change. An extra horn here, some extra appendages there. Actually, bootleg Anguirus is cuter than the official Anguirus. How'd that happen? And look at how a lot of these pictures have the characters in the same positions as the Godzilla Ant cards. These are special water cards with blue art. Once you let the card soak in water, the blue dissolves away to reveal more bootleg Godzilla Ant. 
Look at this, bootleg Godzilla and World had an ultra character walking around. Follow any of my socials where I'm constantly sharing Godzilla and art I've scanned. But I've got one more fun thing to share from the 1980s era of Godzilla and art, and it's this book, Godzilla Gamera Large Monsters. This is like many of those unofficial tokusatsu books from Japan, with anatomy pictures and stats for characters in various films. The illustrations in this particular book include Godzilla characters in their Godzilla and style and poses. So perhaps this is an official artist doing some unofficial work. Or perhaps it's a copycat. Either way, this book gives us a chance to see characters we haven't seen yet, like Megalon and Space Amoeba. And how about characters from other franchises? Ladies and gentlemen, Godzilla and Gamera and friends. Gamera land? Now this is a crossover. A Gauss flying with Mothra and Rodan. I love this. Here's a map in the book that has even more characters. Gappa! Godzilla and style Gappa! But also characters like Titanosaurus, Ganymede, even Gabra all living in this Godzilla and shared universe. There's been a lot of art and merchandise lines featuring various chibi and SD versions of Godzilla. A lot of them would overlap with Godzilla Land's time, but of all of them, Godzilla Land is my absolute favorite. And it doesn't seem like I'm alone in that. I think people gravitate towards its simplicity and innocence, and its style is so unique that I love that it inspires artists in the community to give their own takes. I would love to hear your thoughts about the 1980s Godzilla Land and what art and merch you saw today you liked, and if you brought Godzilla Land back, how would you do it? Sound off below, and I'll see you guys for part two Godzilla Land in the 1990s. Coming soon, but not, but not too soon.